Hey Cloud Gamers, so today I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about Shadow. You might have seen a recent mobile gameplay video of Warzone on Shadow. So today I'm going to tell you what it is and give you a bit of an overview of everything. If you like what we do at Cloud Gaming Extreme, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like this video. So moving along, what is Shadow? Quite simply, it's a virtual gaming PC. Now, virtual private servers have been around a long time. Shadow itself has been around a few years now, but these new gaming tiers have really caught people's attention and it's gaining popularity fast. So if you are interested in getting one after this video, there is a link in the description. But be warned, there is a bit of a wait. Uh, they're aiming for, to get everybody done in five to seven weeks but it does depend on your location. So Shadow, what does it cost? Well, the Boost, which is the most popular plan, is about £15 a month or $15 in the US. In the UK, you need to wait till around August for this. But in the US, it really depends on where you are. So in the West Coast, you could get one as early as May. But if you are on the East Coast, then it is most likely going to be in June. So we do have these other tiers, the Ultra and the Infinite, but these have been pushed back to 2021 now. Some people were lucky enough to get one, uh, but these are the ultimate gaming PCs with 4K RTX 2080s uh, and obviously like Titan RTXs for the super gaming. So the prices here are a little bit hard to go by, so I'm going to go into that shortly. But you can get that discount if you subscribe and commit to a year up front, you'll still pay monthly, but you'll pay a reduced fee. So, what does it cost in comparison to a PC? So if we look at, if you were to build that Shadow Boost machine yourself, for something equivalent, you're looking at around $1,000 or £950 in the UK. You might get that a little bit cheaper if you build it yourself, but for the purpose of this, if we look at the 950 divided by the 15 of the Shadow Boost, that's 63 months equivalent, and 950 versus the discounted rate of 13 is 73 months. That's five to six years equivalent to build the PC or to run Shadow. Now, is it any good? Let's have a look. So this massively depends on something called latency to how you're going to experience this. So my local data center for Shadow is Paris, and you can see here that I can get a, a good 90 meg bandwidth and a latency between 16 and 18 milliseconds which is fantastic it should be barely noticeable but the shadow that i've had access to has been in the texas data center uh, as you can see from here it's vastly different so you can see i'm getting a latency there of around 120 milliseconds and the bandwidth that's available is only around the 40 to 50 megabits per second so it, you know, it has to be a regional box for you to get the best out of Shadow. And you're going to see what this latency looks like shortly. So as long as you get one local to you, that you should have the best experience possible. Now it is a virtual computer. So with virtual computers come virtual problems. You will need to make sure that you get your Shadow settings set up correctly with the allocated bandwidth that's well within your range and you will need to look at getting USB peripherals enabled. Now, it is prone to updates, they update the shadow clients and the systems quite regularly so you're looking at having to update the client every now and then. This seemed to happen to me around two to three times in a week and from a Mac client this could take anywhere between one and five minutes. Sometimes you would go to start the shadow and it just wouldn't start up and you have to go through diagnostics to shut it down and bring it back up again. But on the whole, it has been quite reliable. And then once you're in, it is a virtual computer. So you need to make sure that you update Windows. You need to make sure that you update all the drivers for the stuff that you're using. If you want to play a game, you have to go and download that game. Though you do benefit from 100 gigabits internet. So downloading at 100 meg a second is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it does alleviate some of that pain, but you do have to go through that pain. One of the issues is Modern Warfare, that it will not detect that it's the latest version of Windows, so you get these error messages when you start up. 
Fortunately, there are a lot of workarounds, and as long as the Windows machine is up to date and the latest graphics are installed from Shadow themselves, you can just hit no on these dialogues and the game will launch just fine. So, I mentioned latency earlier, so what does this look like? Well, here I've got the same recording from my Mac looking at the Shadow Client and on the Shadow Client itself. The Shadow here on the left and the Mac on the right. So it's very subtle but you do feel that little bit of lag but this is because I'm at that further away data center. That 120 millisecond lag, although it's not that noticeable in the graphic side, when you're feeling it through the mouse and when you're moving stuff around it is noticeable. So on the graphics front, here you can see the graphics of my PC on the left and the shadow on the right. You can see that the contrast on the plane here and the draw distance is far superior. And you would expect that because I'm only running a GTX 1060 and the graphics in the shadow is supposed to be equivalent of a 1080. That is quite clear. It does run extremely smooth but it is just that latency that becomes a bit of an issue. Though I didn't have that big a problem. Even with 120 millisecond latency, I was still able to play on the shadow box like it was fairly native. And once you got used to it, it just felt like it was a little bit of mouse like. I'm going to show a couple of different drops out of the aeroplanes here so you can just see the difference in the graphics across the surroundings. And then I will leave you with my favourite clip of my time on shadow uh, playing Warzone. It's probably one of the funniest things that I've been able to do. Um, I couldn't believe that it happened. You would expect the guy to be able to see or hear the chopper landing uh, very close by, but hey. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest from Cloud Gaming Extreme. See you next time.